Hey there, folks. Derek Marin here, uh, your host here with the MSP Lead Gen Podcast. This is episode two. I, I really appreciate anyone who's been listening in so far. Um, you know, definitely give me some feedback as I, as I apologize in the first episode, I'll do so again here because I'm, I'm very new to podcasting, at least from a production standpoint. So, uh, and I'm trying to do these all recorded all the way through, not with a whole bunch of like editing. And so, you know, it, it kind of is what it is, what it is with that. So I'll do my best. Um, uh, but anyway, let's jump right into the topic. So, um, we're in the middle of a, of a small series um, related to cold calling best practices. And, you know, I, I thought we were going to jump right into cold calling frameworks and things that, that we do every day with our, with our team. But I realized I needed to give some background first um, because I, I, I think this is really pivotal, pivotal for MSPs that are uh, going to be diving into cold calling. So in the first episode, if you haven't listened to it, please do. Um, but in there we talked, we, we shared some, some statistics and benchmarks from 2022. Um, we quoted some, um, some of our competitors even in terms of the, the numbers that they're getting and basically came to the conclusion that cold calling is still working for MSPs for getting opportunities, but they're, the status quo approach, the way it's been done, it needs to, it needs to be revisited and, and, and in our opinion anyway, changed to start getting better results. And we gave a little glimpse into how how to start how we're thinking about uh, that change, and and so today's episode we're going to continue along the same lines. I'm going to provide some more outside perspective on you know the things that are impacting your industry, the MSP industry, and and how and I think in 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 sharing that, hopefully it'll be clear how it relates to lead generation and how it relates to thus cold calling. Um, so today we'll talk more about. We'll provide a couple more, um, you know, thought leaders um, in the industry, their perspectives indirectly, because I'm getting, I'm, I'm not actually inviting them onto this episode, but I'm going to be kind of going over their their content uh, and what they've said recently. And and then I'll, I'll share a, a framework for for you, for you as an MSP, as your, you know, what what I, what we believe, you know, you need to, to have ready in hand before you start talking to um, talking about cold calling uh, scripts, frameworks, right? So kind of that's where we're headed. So further ado, so this time I actually have some slides. So if you are um, listening to this on uh, on YouTube, then you know what I'm, uh, you can see it on, on the screen. But if you're listening to this uh, as a podcast, definitely if you can come back uh, later to at least check out uh, a couple of the slides, um, especially the last one with our framework. But um, yeah, so... Uh, Starting with uh, some of the ideas from others in the channel, um, right? Um, and just some of the, the, the thoughts and, and ideas that I thought were most relevant. So one of the, um, the things that our team does is we're constantly looking at, um, you know, content that uh, other MSPs are actually putting out, particularly content um, that's created uh, by large, medium to large size MSPs. Um, in part because, you know, we want to be able to uh, get ideas. And of course, we want to understand, you know, what is what is the difference? What is what are the, the larger MSPs doing that maybe the smaller MSPs have not done or not doing yet? Uh, right. Because our job is to help our, our smaller MSPs, the ones that want to grow, want to help them grow. So anyway, we came across Logically. And Logically, if you haven't heard of them, they're a, a big MSP. Uh, I think I checked on their uh, LinkedIn and it looks like they're, you know, around 400 employees or getting close to that, to that, to that number. And I think they operate out of like 11 locations in the United States. Um, they've been buying up, you know, doing the whole mergers and acquisitions thing. And um, one of my favorite or our favorite content um, pieces from, from them is a white paper called Six Reasons to Switch MSPs. Um, and well, I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. I'll just I'll just highlight some of the the parts that I think are pretty interesting. So at the you know there's six reasons, like six chapter white paper. I, I don't think it's on their website anymore, but um, the the reasons that they state. So in this, e I'm kind of I'm reading now from a screenshot that I have on my side. In this ebook, we'll focus on the six specific reasons why you should consider switching to a new MSP. It has um, they lack the required depth and breadth of skills. Um, there's a lack of vision and strategy. Uh, you're not getting enough value from your investment. 
Uh, it also has service offerings aren't tailored to your needs and poor responsiveness and execution. And we also have, I think I might've missed this one. You don't trust your MSP to deliver and always do the right thing. So um, that was very interesting to hear that, you know, those are the reasons that, um, that companies are switching uh, to logically, I guess, because that's, they created this, this white paper. Um, and they also, they also had some, so like a pie chart. Um, I guess they had done some, some research or done surveys of SMBs. And one of the, uh, one of the pie charts uh, reads 66%. And it, that refers to the SMBs agreeing that their current IT is not keeping up with the, with their growing technological needs. Um, so that that was a, that's a very interesting kind of white paper, um, and you know something that our team looks at a lot when we're starting the the training and onboarding for our own BDRs, our business development reps, because we have to really understand what is it that's driving, of course, change from the prospects' perspective. So I just wanted to share their their perspective, um, logically, a larger MSP. Um, uh, what they're saying, the uh, the second the second outside perspective I wanted to share. That, I, that I, we believe is related to this topic um, is one by Dave Sobel. Um, he's the host of MSP Radio. If you haven't heard of him, I'm, uh, you should definitely check him out. He's all over uh, YouTube, the podcasts and, and, and all that. Um, and more specifically, there's a video that he has on YouTube that uh, was like a bonus video, I guess, outside of his normal um, you know, daily or weekly um, news news podcast or news video and this video is called a technique for connecting it services to customer needs directly and it's uh, i think it's the second most viewed video on his entire channel the over seven thirty seven thousand views i think was the last time that uh that i I'd, I'd seen the tally here actually let me move this slide forward um so you guys can see there we go technique for connecting yeah there we go and um so I'm just going to go through some of the key points that he that he shares in the in, in this video. So one is that so he opens um, by by basically saying that um, you know it's really really hard to define business value, and you know everyone is talking to MSPs and saying to saying uh, to MSPs um, and within peer groups, you know that we need to be delivering business value to our customers. Right. And it's, he admits that it's just kind of difficult to define it, to quantify it for MSPs, um, but that it's important to try. It's important to try to because if we don't, then MSPs could be losing, you know, losing business um, or could be losing, you know, could be facing more churn. And the interesting way that Dave goes about explaining, um, you know, the way he sees it anyway, is he pulls up a profit and loss statement, which is actually I took a screenshot of the video. And he pulls up the profit and loss statement. And so he has, um, you know, revenue. At, if you're listening to this on the podcast, you can't see the, the screenshot, but it has revenue at the top, top line, then minus COGS, cost of goods sold, um, that, that gives you gross profit. And then from gross profit, you subtract SG&A, sales, general, and administrative expense. And, and then you're left with net profit, right? Pretty much a, a very simple profit and loss statement. And what he goes on to explain is, okay, so there are three MSP sort of, um, you know, models if, uh, that, that deliver business value. And he describes them as a good business, as a good um, deliver, you know, deliverer of business value, a better and the best. So for him, the way he describes a good um, a, a, uh, a good situation is when IT spend keeps things running, and those are those things are like attached to um, to SG&A spend. So, so for example, you know that 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 would be uh, you know an MSP that is just keeping IT going, operations running smoothly. Um, that would be considered uh, good. Um, and what that means is that that MSP is viewed as an expense and that you're in this bucket of the SG&A for your customer's P&L, right? Along with other things that go in that same bucket for your customer's profit and loss statement are things like insurance, um, utilities, and things like that. So, you know, it's good 
you know, you can provide a lot of value to your customer there. But the downside is that there's a lot of price pressure to to spend as little as possible. And IT is really views, viewed as an expense in that in that category. The better model is to actually is when IT spend is actually focused on reducing costs uh, up in the COGS section of the profit and loss. So if you're able to help your customer with their IT spend and, 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 and what, what they're doing with your help as a service provider, if you're able to help your customer reduce the costs that they need to spend on materials or mainly on labor for them to produce their goods and services, then you're better, right? You're not going to be seen necessarily as an expense, you're going to be seen more as an investment from the customer's perspective. And that is a better place for an MSP to be for delivering business value. And then best was if IT spend is actually directly involved to, to, top, to, to driving top line revenue at the very top of the P&L statement for your customers. And he gives an example of, you know, basically, I think, I think he said something like, oh, so if, for example, with a non, if there was a nonprofit customer, you know, a good situation, um, a good MSP would be one that just keeps email working, right? You keep everything running smoothly from an operational perspective, right? Um, that's the first example, right? You're in SG&A. Better would be if you're helping their staff actually reach 10% um, more potential members uh, for their nonprofit by helping them leverage Microsoft 365 investments that they already have and showing that increase month to month, right? That would be, that, that would be a, a, better, a better situation, right? Where you're, uh, for the MSP in driving more business value for that nonprofit. And then the best example for this nonprofit would be an MSP that's helping them leverage their IT spend to drive more membership and to leverage things like e-commerce and maybe to integrate that system with their association management software, that would be the best, right? So that was a second example of, um, you know, a perspective on the MSP industry that I thought um, was very interesting and very telling um, as to where, um, you know, where, where things are headed. Hey folks, yep, this is a mid-roll commercial. I just had to introduce our company so look, here's a quick story. So back in 2019, I was lucky to get introduced to an MSP. Um, at the time, I didn't know much about your industry. I'd seen that this MSP had invested heavily in SEO and inbound marketing and that it just wasn't working for him. Um, and in the first year or so, uh, I have to admit that we struggled to try to crack the code. But fortunately, uh, we figured it out. And this, not only is this MSP still a partner of ours, we work with many MSPs now throughout North America. And, you know, we are focused really on just two aspects that really helps with top of the funnel for MSPs. And that is managed business development. So it's getting those appointments with first time uh, qualified uh, leads. And second, it's the nurturing part, right? So it's keeping these, these qualified businesses warm and warming them up really towards our MSP partners. So if your MSP needs help with this, just give us a, you know, give us a call. You can visit our website. It's uh, simpleselling.co and you can find the link to book a meeting with us and would uh, would love to meet you and see if maybe we're a good uh, fit for one another. Thanks so much. And uh, let you get back to the episode now. And the, the other example um, from another uh, voice in, in the channel was from, um, the podcast Humanize IT, um, and that's a podcast that is a um, a podcast by managed services platform. I believe they are like an account management um, solution for MSPs, and among other things, I'm sure they could explain their product better than than me. But um, they have a podcast. It's called Humanize IT, and one of their recent episodes was. Um, recorded and it's called, the episode is called The Biggest Problem Facing MSPs Today. And uh, I had a listen and it's, you know, on, and again, I'll just kind of go through some of the key points that they were making in that, in that episode. And ba basically what, what some of the parts that stuck out to me and I'm kind of uh, reading my notes here. So I apologize uh, if um, uh, hopefully this will make sense. <laughs> um, but he said, or they said, I think it was two of them speaking in the in the in the podcast but they said 
Um, MSP should stop acting like retailers, right? They, they, MSPs should, in theory, be able to run their company selling assets at cost and actually leverage that. And actually, that could be a great marketing advantage for the MSP if you are selling all the hardware and all their stuff at cost. As a managed services provider, the MSP should be focused on services. And he said, unfortunately, many MSPs have been duped or tricked because they didn't have a sales plan. And all these vendors, the large vendors that have, ex that have exploded within the channel over the years, they've come in with all this stuff and they have a sales plan and a business plan in place. And they, they kind of give that to the MSP and say, MSP, go sell this stuff. And then MSPs have sort of said, okay. And we add a mar you guys add a margin to these things. And so MSPs are starting to look and feel um, more like resellers and less and less like service providers. And that, that, you know, that is a big problem. And then they go on to, the, the, to, to talk in this episode about, all right, so some MSPs might be hearing this and saying, well, okay, we can provide better services. So that better services must mean things like, quote unquote, patching, better patching or gold support, IT support, and more advanced stuff in that realm. And that is exactly what we, what, what these, uh, what humanized IT is saying is not the type of service that customers actually want. What they really want is, is some someone who's going to help them with their problems within the business department, problems that that they're having with, you know, not generating enough profit. Um, and the only way that uh, really uh, an MSP is going to be able to accomplish that is by building a stronger relationship with your customers. And in order to do that, that is not easy. It's hard, but it's critical because if you develop that relationship, if you're running those quarterly business reviews or strategic business reviews consistently with the right people, then you're really going to understand your customer's businesses better. And that's going to lead to opportunities for you to deliver a better service. And that was the premise of their whole episode. And they gave some examples of like doctors wanting a better way to do EHR um, and, and, and a few other examples. So I thought that was like, wow, like I'm hearing that from, you know, this vendor, I'm hearing that from the news, MSP news guy. And, you know, even from one of your own competitors, a larger MSP, like logically hearing that customers are switching because they want more strategy and vision and they want more ROI from their technology and not just another, um, a better backup and disaster solution. Right. Um, and not just, you know, another person who is going to talk all day um, about hacking and, um, you know, the gloomy, you know, worst case scenario um, topics, which is what every MSP seems to be uh, obsessed with these days. Understandably so, but your customers, I've kind of had it. Um, and so, you know, what is our, our perspective at Simple Selling um, based on our experience? Um, and just what we've learned from, from these other voices in the channel and from our own MSP partners is, um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll actually, I'll, I'll share, I'll share like a little example, um, of kind of what, what we're seeing, um, a bit in whenever, you know, a, an MSP approaches simple selling or, you know, and we start talking about, you know, what simple selling does with, you know, business development and marketing and, and, and top of the funnel stuff for MSPs, the questions that inevitably come in the first couple of minutes in 99% of the time, they, they tend to, MSPs tend to ask us about things related to our pricing very quickly. And they also ask us a lot of process questions, process oriented questions, things like how many dials or like how many appointments can you uh, produce? And and then I answer these questions. And then when I come back with a question, okay, so what is your differentiation? And what I also get 99% of the time is a blank look. Um, or um, I get answers like we're proactive. We have great people, lots of experience, many years of experience. We have the best cybersecurity. And folks, I think we're, I, I'm hoping that you guys are, are, are seeing that this is just not actual differentiation, at least not the type that your potential customers 
um, are really going to to absorb and believe, right? At least not from the perspective of a cold caller, right? It's one thing to get a referral, but we're not talking about referrals. This is a podcast about, especially this series about cold calling. So these are total strangers, strangers to the person calling them, strangers to your MSP. Okay, so that answer from our MSPs, or not our MSPs, but when MSPs strategy, that's just not really having a strategy. And that's coming to us or coming to a, a, a BDR who you might want to hire, right? Because be you could be having the same conversation with a BDR who might, who might be doing cold calling for you in-house. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. That's, that's not necessary. And, and that, and that coupled with everything that's happening in the industry and the other voices that are saying, these are the things that are happening. This is the problem with the industry. I think that all of these things combined kind of explain why cold calling has the rap that it has and why it's becoming harder and harder to be effective for MSPs every day, because all of these things are not really being uh, resolved as uh, at least not at the industry level. Of course, in the in individual MSPs, that's 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 different, um, and that's what we're here. We're trying to trying to help, trying to bring this this situation um, to light, um, and to see how 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 we can help. So, one of the ways, um, uh, one of the things I wanted to share was actually the story of Southwest, which if you uh, I have it up on my screen here, because I think their story, their success story, is very much align with what we're talking about for MSP. So for those of you who don't know, you know, Southwest began a small airline carrier in Texas. And when they began, you know, there was all of these huge competitors, right? All, all the big, big, uh, big airline carriers, they had, you know, way more resources, way more years in, in the industry. Um, they had, you know, you know, a lot more to, 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 to edge this little airline carrier out. But Southwest was able to pull through. And how did they do this, though? What was their plan? So more specifically, their plan is they wanted an outcome. And their outcome was to be a substitute for Greyhound um, bus travelers in Texas. So they wanted to provide those that specific segment a more convenient way to get around at a price that wasn't that much greater than a Greyhound bus. So that was their target. Very, very specific, right? And not only did they just have a target, they had to do some other things to make this strategy work. They also had to, for example, everyone else was flying hub and spoke, right? But not Southwest. They just did point to point, right? So that was lowering their cost. They only flew 737s. So that, that, that was just more efficient. Right, not having to have different types of services and 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 upkeep for different types of planes, they did not offer meals on the flights, lower costs. They specialize in short flights, and they even encourage their customers to book online to cut the cost of of booking the 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 airfare. So they did a lot of things internally to make sure that they were they had the capabilities to deliver on for this specific segment, and it worked. You know, it worked. They they were able to deliver a low cost model as a result. As a result, and of course, we all know that they became a really successful, and now they're a big player. Um, they have been for a long time. So the point of that story is, um, you know, I mean, the major carriers they weren't necessarily trying to, you know, for them there wasn't for the major carriers to grow there wasn't a strategy for a major carrier to grow at that time. It was just to buy more planes. Right, not so similar, not not so different from how many MSPs today think of growing by just you just got to dial more, right? You just got to dial more. You got to send more emails. You got to put more posts on social media. You just got to do more, 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 right? That's just the way. That's exactly the way the other airline carriers thought. And little little, you know, this this little airline came in and had a plan, and they executed it so well. And now they took they took over one segment in Texas, then they grew to something else, and grew to some, you know, when it got bigger and bigger and bigger, one step one step at a time. So um, I love the story of Southwest, and I hope that you know 
it, it resonates with you. Um, and that, you know, some of the ideas coming, not just from me and from simple song, but from others in the channel are also, um, lending to, to this idea and that it, it, uh, it hopefully sets you up for success when you're continuing or when you're starting your, uh, cold calling and outbound prospecting, uh, initiative. So to finish off, um, I wanted to provide you with um, something that we're just calling, you know, to keep this pretty pretty simple is the MSP strategic growth framework. And it's really just four questions, four questions that I think you need to answer in order for you to have the strategic differentiation idea clear um, before working on a cold calling framework. So here they are, ready? Number one, where are you going to play, right? Question one, what is the, that, that is the first question. What is the vertical or what is the segment that you want to target? Two, how are you actually going to win? Be specific. What is the edge? Three, what capabilities do you actually need to have in order to execute that? And four, what management systems need some tweaking? for your MSP to, to, to do this. And, and if you do that, if you pick a, a segment or a vertical to start with, you're gonna be going into a blue ocean when it comes to cold calling. You're going to be standing out and you're gonna be getting the kinds of results or you should be getting much better results than the average cold calling MSP out there. So go get it and um, definitely make sure you you stay tuned for the next episode. I'm pretty sure it'll be the final episode on this little series related to cold calling. We will actually get into cold calling itself on the final episode. Uh, I just felt like we needed the, these two sort of background episodes um, first uh, before getting into the cold calling um, specifically. Take care. I appreciate you. Don't forget to please subscribe and uh, we'll see you next time.